small gold. Hello and welcome to another small gold live stream. It is Friday night, December 7th, 2018. And good evening, small gold mug game changers. What do we got tonight? Well, tonight we want to take a look at American Silver Eagle sales for the month of December and American Silver Eagle sales in 2018, and they are not good. But we will get to those before we get to those. We've got plenty of charts tonight, Silver Eagle charts. We've also got results of some polls, some very interesting results regarding silver, gold, cryptocurrencies, and the Dow, and that's what we're going to look at the prices of right now so gold let's take a look what happened with gold today it was a nasty day again in the equity markets there was no sneak 3 p.m fed announcement about not raising interest rates possibly it was just straight on straight down for the dow with no help at all from any source left to its own devices it looks like the market wants to go down now what about gold let's take a look at the gold price today on december 7th and i'd say it went up a little more than a little bit up ten dollars it's up ten dollars so now the price of gold is approaching twelve hundred and fifty dollars it was twelve hundred and forty nine dollars and eighty nine cents as the high just didn't get to twelve fifty closed around twelve forty seven and that's just about where it is right now that was good for a 0.87% gain. Very noteworthy that gold has been going up when the market goes up, and gold has been going up when the market goes down. I would think that gold is getting a volatility bid here, something we've been talking about for quite some time. We've got political turmoil, we have economic turmoil, lots of uncertainties out there. In fact, Discussed that a bit in an interview today that I just posted with Silver Fortune. It's up over on Silver Fortune's site. If you don't know that channel, you can go check that out over there. Or you can check it out at the friendly confines of the Small Gold YouTube channel as well. And I will post this video and that video in tomorrow's, or, yeah, tomorrow's blog post on smallgold.com. Now over at Silver, another good day for Silver. Silver managed to just slightly outpace gold today, which is good. You like to see gold and silver moving somewhat in lockstep. You don't like to see silver lagging far behind and gold moving ahead. As I mentioned, I like to see gold break ahead, build that lead for a few months, and then for silver to play catch up. So pretty much what's happening, we'll see that in the gold-silver ratio. Silver closed, oh, about uh, 1460 and that was good for a 0.97 rise. That is 97% rise, and that was slightly better than gold. So what did that do for our gold-silver ratio? You know, the one that's unsustainable and should be 16 to 1 or 9 to 1 or 1 to 1 because silver is rarer than gold, and that is all you need to know. Not true, but the gold-silver ratio went down a little bit, just a little bit, went down to 85.58 to 1, a far cry. From some of the stories we hear. I do expect that ratio to tighten as we move into a bull market, which I think probably now is for the first time I see signs that investor money should probably be moving back into gold or silver unless somehow they can pull another rabbit out of the hat. It seems that we are reaching a limit to how much markets can be manipulated downward. We saw a massive drop again in the cryptos. However, however, cryptos also had a massive rebound. But let's take a look at the prices. At some point, some of your favorite cryptos were down 20, 25%. That's on top of the massive losses that they have incurred over the past few weeks. But Bitcoin right now is flat. It's at 3,400 from yesterday. It had been down about 11%. Bitcoin Cash had been down, oh, about 20 three twenty four percent it's now up two percent 104.61 ethereum had been way down and is now up 4.92 percent litecoin had been down 21 percent had been down about 22 dollars 
and now it's at twenty five dollars. Uh, that's only down about three and a half percent. Ethereum Classic has risen twelve point four one percent. So we're seeing a classic either dead cat bounce or a reversal. Now, let's take a look at. Well, we're still on the topic of gold and silver, and then I, we're going to get look at some polls. Then I just want to talk briefly about James Comey and his testimony today. We got a clip on that, so stay tuned for that. But let's take a look at the small gold polling today. So small gold is now doing polls on Twitter. I've been doing them for a while. Anyone who doesn't follow me on Twitter, if you do have a Twitter account, it's at smallgold.com. A couple of things happened today before I go to the polls. No, I'll handle those when I when I handle Comey. Let's look at the polls. So the question I asked was, and I started with uh, Bitcoin, and I asked, Bitcoin is either a safe bet, a long shot, or a sure sure loser. And a lot of people out there trying to tell you, Bitcoin's a store of value. I I don't get it. Or Bitcoin is digital gold. I don't I don't get that either. Uh, Bitcoin is unique in and of itself, but it's not digital gold. It doesn't exist by itself the way gold does. Putting that aside, I asked, is Bitcoin at 3300 a safe bet? Well, now it's at 3400 but that's not the point. 36% actually thought that was a safe bet. That if you had Bitcoin at 3300 you'd feel pretty comfortable that you're okay. 13% said it was a long shot. And 51% thought it was a sure loser. Which means basically half the people don't think it's a sure loser. But having half the people think it's a sure loser, that's not very good. Let's see how another cryptocurrency did with the similar question. And that was, I think we asked it about Litecoin. We said Litecoin is a $22 safe bet, a long shot or a sure loser. Well, Litecoin was a safe bet at 36%, 12% a long shot, and 52% a sure loser. So basically, the same concept. Half the people think that either Bitcoin or Litecoin are sure losers about half the time. But there is a third of people who think that either Bitcoin or Litecoin is a sure bet, which I thought was pretty surprising. But then again, there's probably that many people that actually think that Bitcoin and Litecoin, or more probably Bitcoin, are stores of value. This was the most surprising thing. Before we get to gold and silver, now keep in mind, half the people think Bitcoin and Litecoin are sure losers. But check out the Dow. <laughs> the Dow at 24,600, which it's now at 24,388, only 27% thought it was a safe bet. 13% thought it was a long shot. 60% thought it was a sure loser. So more people think that the Dow is riskier at, than Bitcoin and Litecoin. And that somewhat makes sense given that Bitcoin and Litecoin are down 90%, 80 to 90%, I suppose, unless you think they're going to zero, which some people do, that uh, they're a sure bet than Dow at all time high. I think that's probably what drove that sure loser answer. Now let's take a look at gold and silver. Again, shocking on in one part and uh, not surprising on the other. Gold. Gold is 75% thought it was a safe bet. And I thought, okay, safe bet? I would have thought it had been higher. 6% thought it was a long shot, but 20%, nearly 20% thought it was a sure loser. I don't know what they mean by loser, but then I didn't define what a sure loser is, but I would imagine it would have to be something... A, a, pretty much a drop I would think gold now at 1200 actually gold historically has always been a relative sure bet other than periods of time when it just spikes like when it did in 2011 but ever since then I mean it really once it, it corrected down to the 14 1300 dollar level it's been pretty consistent but here we go now silver same question silver is let's see our survey says 75% just like gold thought it was a safe bet 16% a long shot but only 9% thought it was a sure loser again probably the same mentality of play it's way down off its all-time highs uh, not as down as far as Bitcoin and Litecoin but still you've got a decent decline and silver probably bouncing along the bottom at 1450 
whereas gold's probably been a little hasn't gotten hit as hard as silver but that's typical for both metals for gold to not drop as much as silver in a bear market and then silver to outperform gold in a bull market all right game changers now before we move on let's just take a look quickly before we get to the american silver eagles that's again why we're here topic of this of the show tonight is american silver eagle sales collapse in 2018 but first let's take a look what happened in the world of politics and donald trump was at it today rex tillerson gave some type of interview and he was saying that donald trump wasn't organized he didn't know he didn't understand how the process works sometimes he'd ask him to put stuff that was illegal into play and that's just classic process wall street board members where you're i've worked in business and there are a lot of people that are just fans of the process as long as you do the process right they think you've done a good job even if the project doesn't produce any results he did a great job on it okay he dotted all the the i's and crossed all the t's but and he finished the project and everyone was happy they finished it but the project was a dud it seems that that's somewhat how washington works as everyone likes to push your bill through and Trump, it seems, he just looks for results and he just tries to get stuff done and he doesn't understand probably the process. But in any event, <laughs> Tillerson trashed him and said he, he, he doesn't understand, he couldn't, he doesn't want to listen. And there's been a lot of talk. He doesn't want to read the memos, doesn't want to read the reports. And a lot of people think that it's the report and the memo that matter. No, it's what happens that matters, not the memo. But again, people in Washington, people in, in organizations, some of them are very much slave to process and uh, they give points. A lot of people rise to prominence because they're very good at following process, handing out process, measuring stuff, uh, not necessarily getting results. But in any event, Trump is not one to let when someone gives him a direct broadside like Trump's not too organized. Trump um, asked me to do illegal stuff he's not going to sit back and take that so he basically said pompeo's doing a great job who is rex tillerson's replacement as secretary of state and he said i'm very proud of him his predecessor comma however comma rex tillerson didn't have the mental capacity needed he was dumb as a rock and i couldn't get rid of him fast enough he was lazy as hell now it's a whole new ball game great spirit at state so i'm sure rex tillerson probably I, again you know you leave the white house i don't see what points you gain by tra saying stuff about the president that pretty much everyone already knows and i'm not sure why he said it other than to get a response from trump on a tweet all right now before we move on to american silver eagle sales collapse Let's take a look what happened. I think tomorrow night, we're, there's a lot of things happening in this Mueller, Cohen, Rosenstein. There's a lot going on there. I'm not going to cover it tonight. We'll probably cover it tomorrow night. But one thing that happened today that we should just quickly take a look at, and that is James Comey went to have his behind-closed-door meeting with the Congress and he tried to get out of it. He tried to have it in public session. And you know why he wanted to do that. He wanted to have a little back and forth and pontificate for the cameras about how the process is important and all that kind of stuff. And they were having none of it. And he tried to sue to get out of it. And uh, the court said no. And they had the thing uh, behind um, closed doors with a transcript that's going to be produced tomorrow. So we'll probably have to take a good look at that. But from what I understand, uh, Daryl Issa was one of the guys, and I think Trey Gowdy, they were all in there asking him questions. And the Justice Department attorney said he didn't answer basically all the... I mean, the Justice Department attorney kept advising Comey not to answer questions. And Daryl Issa said, and of course he couldn't speak in specifics because the transcript isn't out yet he said broadly speaking he didn't answer any questions regarding the hillary clinton email investigation how they got to it what the process was they answered he answered no questions on the fisa warrant and what daryl Issa called the fake dossier so here is i'm going to play for you the response of james comey 
who, before we get to his response, Donald Trump got wind of what James Comey did in the meeting, i.e. didn't answer any questions, and he went straight to his favorite Means of communication went to Twitter and he said it is being reported that leaking James Comey, sometimes he calls him leaking lion James Comey, was told by the Justice Department attorneys not to answer the most important questions. Total bias and corruption at the highest levels of previous administration forced him to answer the questions under oath. Now, he's supposed to go back in a week and a half. After that, the Democrats, the Republicans don't have control of the Congress. And so they're going to have to get the Senate to push forward anything they want to do, and they have control of that. So I would imagine a Senate committee is even more powerful than a House committee. Now, here's James Comey, fresh from his day of questioning to meet the adoring press. Thank you, Comey, can I ask you a question yeah. on, on FISA abuse? It's a major issue for the Republicans. Did you have total confidence in the doctor when you used it to secure a surveillance warrant and also in the subsequent renewals? I have total confidence that the FISA process was followed and that the entire case was handled in a thoughtful, responsible way by DOJ and the FBI. I think the notion that FISA was abused here is nonsense. Okay, so he's dismissing the FISA uh, when it seems like, and they have emails that say they did not have trust in the steel dossier or the other information that they had basically used circuitous uh, FBI tactics, planting a story through steel, through Yahoo, and then putting the Yahoo news story into the, the FISA warrant. And then that the FISA warrant itself, I mean, the, the dossier itself from which they pulled a lot of information, it wasn't verified. But he claims now, he said now, on not on the record, but in public forum, in a press gaggle, that uh, everything was filed correctly. But here's the real thing. This shows, this was his other comment that shows his disdain for even having to go and answer questions. I'm coming back. We've scheduled a date to come back on the 17th after a full day of questioning. Uh, two things are clear to me. One, we could have done this in open come setting. Back, and two, when you read the transcript, you will see that we are talking again about Hillary Clinton's emails, for heaven's sake. So I'm not sure we need to do this at all. But I'm trying to respect the institution and to answer questions in a respectful way. You'll see I did that in the transcript. You'll see that if you get a transcript of my return visit, which I think will be a week after next. And then this will be over. All right. So there is Jim Comey saying that, my goodness, all we're doing is talking about Hillary's emails. So that's how they've minimized the disclosure of confidential information the mishandling of confidential information is just we're talking about her emails for heaven's sake all right let's get to the topic of the evening and that is american silver eagle sales collapse in 2018 uh-oh we got a moron here presenting the distinguished international news commentator and foreign correspondent <laughs> This has been an extraordinary week in world affairs. Now I told Hillary Clinton that that's moronic. All right, what's going on with American Silver Eagle sales? Well, it looks like to me, and I could be wrong, and that wouldn't be a first, but I think the U.S. Mint has shut down for the year. They sometimes do that in December. To, they claim to change over the blanks or the... The, the dies for the next year. Now, I'm not sure it takes that long. I think they just want to go home for the holidays. Nothing wrong with that. But I think it's also because they don't have much more demand left that authorized purchasers need to make a final 2018 order. So the chart you're looking at now shows generally December sales. Not generally, but December sales of American Silver Eagles. Now, the first year was a huge year, a huge month, because they only started making them September. They clearly were new, i.e. a novelty, literally a novelty, and people were shaking to get them, um, literally shaking. And they sold a lot in just September, October, November, December. So that's why December is a very high number. But in general, December is was a high number, always has been. 
um, especially if you look at and you're going to compare we're going to compare annual sales uh, 1990 where you see they sold 1.4 was not a big year I mean that they sold a decent chunk of their overall sales at the end of the year same with 1994 these are year, years where they're under 10 million in sales so they're selling a lot in December now in your bigger years like 2014 and 15 all right, 2.459 million sold. That's nice. Um, so December used to be a big year when they first came out. I mean, a big month when they first came out with uh, the American Silver Eagle. But generally, sometimes you can see 1998, for example, they weren't selling many anyway. 2016, they shut down early. They only sold 250, I think, that, or 200,000 in December last year. There was a bit of a pickup towards the end of the year. So generally, December, it's hit or miss. And lately, it's been more of a miss. Um, but let's take a look now. It's hard. That, that doesn't really show you much. It just shows you that this December was not a good December. But let's take a look now at uh, this year's sales. Maybe you get a bit more perspective. Got a lot of charts. So you, you can put it all together, and I'll try to help you do that. All right, so here is 2018 American Silver Eagle sales by month. Every January, there's a big bump in sales. That's when the authorized purchasers get their inventory that they will then on sell to online retailers and uh, coin stores and so on. And the authorized purchasers buy direct from the Mint. There's only about 10 or 11 of them. I think only Atmex is the only online dealer that is also an authorized purchaser. The rest of your dealers, SD Bullion, Money Metals Exchange, Golden Eagle Coin, Provident Metal, Gainesville Coin, BJSC, I'm not leaving anyone out. They get their American Silver Eagles from either Atmex or one of the authorized purchasers like uh, J-Mark, I think is the, one of them is called. It's a public company. There's a bunch of others. A bunch of others. And they pay $2 per coin over the price of silver, spot price of silver, no matter what the price of silver is. So that makes the premiums pretty rich when you're down this low because it's a big percentage, $2 out of $14 is a lot. When it's $50, it's less important. But in any event, they sell a lot in the in January. Now, in the last, I don't have a January. I do have a chart, but I don't have it with me tonight. January is generally, in the last few years, been really high. As high as six, seven, eight million uh, American Silver Eagles sold in January. This year, it was 3.2 million. As we're going to see, we're going to compare this year versus last year. Last year was higher, 2017. And then you saw a really, really tepid February, March, and April, under a million. That was a first, really. You were not a first this year, but since 2013, 14, and 15, and it's most of 16, it was always over a million. 2017, we started to see under sub one million. But May and June really hit the skids. You can see 380,000 in May, 435 in June. And then in August, it picked up to almost what you would consider semi-robust you know a million and a half three million almost in september uh decent october decent november and maybe they just closed down shop i'm not sure that december sales have fallen off i just think that the dealers are going to have to make do with whatever inventory they have left for 2018 so before we look at the comparison between 2017 and 18 let's take a look at the premiums on American Silver Eagles. It's very important. This is Atmex. I've been covering this since 2015. You could see I had Nick Laird. Comm I commissioned this chart to Nick Laird. And you can see I was on to something. Two or three months after I commissioned it, you see this big spike. Because I knew there was a big year going on. I thought maybe there might be some uh, shortages or some, some, not shortages in silver, but shortages in American Silver Eagles. And indeed, there was. They basically ran out of planchets in 2015 in September. And they couldn't make any more. And the premiums went up. If people wanted to buy American Silver Eagles in September, the dealers were out. They weren't going to get any from the mint for a few month, few weeks. And so the premium shot up to 50%. Look at that. 50%. So at the time, if a Silver Eagle was 14 bucks, you had to pay like $25, $30 for it. And then, of course, they've come down. And there's not much of... Much to learn from this chart other than you can see at the end of the year, generally premiums go up a bit. So look between towards the end of 2016 and 17, 
And then at the end of 2017 to 18, we'll probably see it go up between now and the end of the year. That's basically because the dealers start to run out of that year's coin and they're buying already and placing orders for the next year's coin. And if people want to get their hands on the 2016 or the 17 or 18, whatever it is, they have to, the dealers know and they kind of squeeze you. They realize if you're a collector and you want this year's coin, they're going to uh, boost the price up just a little bit. All right, let's take a look between this year and last year, uh, 2016, 2017, 2018. Again, tomorrow, all these charts will be up on the Small Gold site. You should subscribe to smallgold.com. You can do that just by going over to Small Gold. Get all the game-changing information that you might need, all the charts you can see, all the show notes in case you missed the show, or sometimes it's just good to follow along. You, you can watch the this video right on the Small Gold site and then scroll down and look at the, the charts there in case so you don't have to toggle back and forth on your YouTube screen. So here you can see, as I was mentioning, this is a year by year comparison. And in, uh, hold on just a minute. There we go. Okay, at 5.1 million in January last year. So you can see that was a big, a bigger year, more close to what you would consider a big year for the years 2010, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 when they started selling a lot of Silver Eagles. We're going to look at the annual charts as well. Just hold on. And then you can see January this year, 2018 in the red, is the three point um, the three million plus. And then you can see from February, March, and May, June, and July, the 2017 numbers were better. Often over a million, a million six, 2.4, 2.3. And then even in June, almost a million. And then you could see those bad months in the red. But as we mentioned, 2018 ended, other than December, on a stronger note. And there I've put in the numbers for the 2018 months. And I didn't put in the numbers just to get a little messy, the chart. So what I did was on this chart is I only put in the winning month. And you can see the winning months versus the other month in 2017 were the first half of the year and then the red 2018 pretty much mopped up 2017 however we did end up selling fewer american silver eagles in 2018 than 2017 despite the strong finish or swedish finish okay so that is your side by side comparison and we've got I think we've got two more charts on American Silver Eagles. And then we've got to do Perth Mint. We've got to take a look at a lot of stuff. Now, Perth Mint this year is not much down from last year. They look like through November they sold 8.5 million ounces of Silver Eagles. And last year at this time they sold 8.7. So the U.S. Mint has had a bigger drop-off. Same with gold, too. We'll see that tomorrow. I don't know about tomorrow. i got to get the uh, all the charts done for gold. American Gold Eagles, I have to do Perth Silver Eagles, Perth Mint Silver, Perth Mint Gold, Canadian Mint Silver, Canadian Mint Gold, and I want to do the um, America the Beautiful. So we got a lot of charts to make, may not get to them all right away, but again, they'll all be uploaded onto smallgold.com, and I hope to be able, I might not do videos on all of them, because there's a lot of topics we have to cover, so I may just post they may just get posted and you won't know it unless you go check the website. Or I may do a uh, video that's not a live stream and you won't get to participate. But I'll get the, I will get the information out. Now the American Silver Eagle sales, you can see from 1986 to 2007, they were more of a curiosity. They People weren't buying them that much for investment. You can see... The first year they came out five million, then they sold nine million. But after that, you could see there's really until 2002 they never did more than 10 million. Now, what's important to note is this year, if you go all the way to the far right, looks like we're going to end up at 15.36 million. All right, 15.36 million. That's a decent number. Uh, a decent number, but not compared to everything since 2009. But take a look when the last time silver sales were low, 2007, just before the financial crisis. 
And then 2008, they weren't much better except that 19 million that you see there, 19.5 million in 2008. Most of that was sold from September on when the crisis hit. And then you see 2009, they start to move up, 2010. But at the height of the crisis, silver was not the go-to metal. So 2008, 9, and 10 are your, your crisis periods. The record period came after the crisis when the price of silver fell after 2011. You can see that 2013, 14, and 15, 42.67, 44 million it's actually 44006000, but that's 44 million, good enough. And 47 million, that's a flat number, that is, was 47 million on the button. Those three years were not financial crisis years. They were actually the end of QE, but they were very low silver prices and people loaded up. And that is, and silver is rarer than gold. JP Morgan has silver, and that is all I need to know. That's all that started. Comex default, game changer. So silver really took off as an investment metal during that period. 2016 ended at 37 million, but the first half of 2016, it was on a pace that was going to top 47 million. And then it fell off the table, and it's basically been falling off the table ever since, except I'd say the last five months of 2018. If they can keep up that pace in 2019, we may see a increase in 2019 over 2018. And in fact, it could actually play out just like 2008. The year starts off like 2007 and it's doing okay. And then if we have some type of crisis in the middle of or towards the end of 2019, then you might see silver catch another bid. All right, now let's compare this finally to Americans, what I like to do is, you know how you got the gold-silver ratio, unsustainable. I like to look at also the silver-to-gold sales ratio at the U.S. Mint. This is a small gold exclusive. And this shows the number of American silver eagles compared to the number of one-ounce American gold eagles from 1986 to 2008. Now, as I was mentioning, the silver eagle was not that big of a deal from 1986 to like 2000. And it wasn't even a big deal in 2000. I'll explain why that 97 number is meaningless. You can see that the first year, they only sold, they sold less than four American silver, they, they sold four American silver eagles to one American gold eagle. Actually less than, it's 3.89. And then it creeped up a bit. The highest was 34 silver eagles to one gold eagle in 1991. In 1998 and 1999, when people were worried about Y2K, look at those numbers, single digits. They were almost selling as much um, gold as they were silver. Silver was not the thing that people were piling into for Y2K. In fact, 6 to 1, 2.8 to 1, not selling a lot of silver. Now, the reason it spikes in 2000 and 97.16 is because gold sales basically dropped off when Y2K proved not to be any big deal. And I realize now we're 18 years on since Y2K, and there may be some people who have no idea what I'm talking about. Y2K stood for the year 2000, 2K, K, 1000. Um, and what they were worried about with the computers was they wouldn't roll over because they were basically, it was like 1969, 79, 89. They, wouldn't, they didn't know what would happen if it got to 2000. And they thought maybe it could be doomsday, game over and game changer. And then the, the grid wouldn't work and the planes couldn't fly and you couldn't live your life the way you live it. And it would be a Mad Max world and you better have gold. Well, then in 2000, that threat passed because every, they worked. They, it's not like they just, they had been working on it for a couple of years. They knew it was going to happen. They'd been alerted to it and companies spent a fortune in 98, 99, preparing for it. And to their credit, they managed to make sure it worked. That's why the number is 96.16 to 1. But then you see it drops back down under 50 to 1 for the longest time in one spike in 2007. But look at 2008, 9, and 10. Height of the financial crisis. This is my point. The, the amount of silver sold compared to gold wasn't that elevated 
you could see even though they sold more silver they were selling a tremendous amount of gold at least for the US mint during that time period but then look at 2014 that's when silver was cheap 2015 that's when they were selling a lot more silver on a comparative basis and even today now that the silver had a, oh, we had a very bad year in silver this year but we had a worse year in gold that's why the gold the silver to eagle to gold eagle ratio is 82 to 1 this year I think they sold they're gonna sell 15.1 million American silver eagles they only sold 188,000 one ounce American gold eagles all right well that about does it for tonight let's take a look at what we got over in the comments section and Holloman's becoming a, reg a regular, not a register. Hello, good to see you. Pablo is here, also a regular. De La Ville, also a regular, is here. All the small gold mug game changers are here. Although I'm not sure if Anne has her small gold mug yet. Let's see. If silver is at 50, there's no reason it can't go back up. Well, that's true. That That's true. It was at, it was at 50 in 1980. It's at 50 in 2011. I mean, everything else is ridiculously overvalued. And now with the crypto crunch, where are you going to go? I mean, I it is, bef it is befuddling to me, but I've never been jumping up and down because I saw how monies could be deployed elsewhere, and that's why the silver didn't go up. Put a manipulation aside, everything else. Um, all right, I hear the dog. Yeah, that dog. He doesn't listen to me. If he knows I'm doing a podcast, he doesn't care. He sees something, he says something. All right, where do I go to participate in this survey? Oh, that's closed now. They were on. They were on uh, Twitter. If you can follow on Twitter, I could put some surveys up on the. If you want me to do that on the in the Small Gold uh, YouTube community, we could post them on the Small Gold website. All right, Crypto Shrug author is here. That's good to see. Good to see the Crypto Shrug author. That is a literal screen name book crypto shrugged author check it out i'll buy a 25 because that's when it will take off a lot of people have that view that they want to they want to make sure that everything is okay before they put their toe in the water and i think you might see if cryptos eventually rebound you won't you'll have i call it the the relief rally and then there's a belief rally and the belief rally is when it really starts to take off when people say whoa this thing was uh, $14, and now it's $24, I believe. Whereas the relief rally could just be from 14 to 16 and no one really believes it. They're like, yeah, it's a dead cat bounce. And then it goes to 17 and 18 and 19. And then people say, oh, I believe in this. All right. When can we expect 25? Who knows? American Eagles, Canadian Coins, Canadian Maples. Yeah, the problem with maples is you always got a different picture of the queen. The, the backside is, is generally nice, though. Not of the queen, of the uh, of the coin. Yeah, only God knows when we'll start an upward path. You guys are talking numismatics in the sidebar here. I'm not going to get into that. GSGS is here. Hello. Miser is here clapping his hands or waving high. All right, De La Ville, I've been buying silver and gold for the last 12 years. I regret buying so much silver, as most people would, because you look at that gold-silver ratio, it's almost gone up 50%. It's gone from like 50 to 85. If you had just had gold instead of silver, you wouldn't have lost that 50% on the silver. You're lucky and smart to do that. Bought cryptos last year and sold most of them late spring. Well, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. I still have, by the way, if anyone has any leftover cryptos, I'm more than happy to take crypto donations. I mean, Litecoin at 20 some odd dollars, someone wants to send me $20. I'll take it. Go straight into the coin base. All right. I actually had some. It wasn't, it wasn't Litecoin. I used to get donations from people in like 2015 and 16 because they wanted me to try it and all this stuff. And I was like, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, I'll try it. And I opened up the Coinbase account and I had it like flip into cash as soon as they sent it to me. So they would send me six, eight dollars and I would get six or eight dollars. But that was like when the price was, you know, a few hundred dollars. Even today it would still be worth a lot more, but I flipped it into. And then when the price rose, no one sent me anything. And then, well, no, people did send me money. I am appreciative of that, but people stopped sending me 
the cryptocurrencies once they went up. I think people were sending them. They they thrown in the towel. All right. Sold some silver and paid my credit card and let it get too high. Yeah, that's that's a problem. You think that the silver is gonna make sense to not pay your credit card because the silver is gonna is gonna go up and then you realize the silver's going down and your credit card's going higher. Yeah. Are there a lot of people that feel like you do? I'm still holding some tokens that I got crushed. I wanted to keep a little. Yeah. All right. Let's see. De Laville actually sent mine to SD Billion. They're really good. They process and pay fast. They sent four. Oh, okay. He sent them that. That's an, That would be an interesting story to, to tell how to do that. Um, you know what I do? I do. If anyone's interested, maybe some of you are new and you don't know. I haven't done it in a while, but I have the small gold subscribers sound off series and I try to, and I basically interview just the subscribers. Now I have some subscribers that also have relatively uh, big channels. I had the wealth watchman on Steve San Angel for the most part though, those interviews are with, with, uh, people like us people well, that, that are not, uh, big names, the same big names that you see on all the silver channels. I know I have to get Crypto Shrugged author on, so he's probably the first in line. I better start, start uh, scheduling people. So if anyone's interesting, interested in being on the show, it's a very pleasant show. I basically let you talk most of the time. I don't interrupt, only just to clarify to, or to keep you talking. Um, you talk about what you want to talk about. We talk about in advance what you want to talk about. But uh, if you want to talk about, you know, the, the idea of what it's like to actually sell your silver and how to do it. And a lot of people haven't thought that through. Like, they buy it, I guess, and they think they're going to sell it in the apocalypse. But they realize, like you say, they got a credit card bill or something like that. All right. They play very good Christ. Local coin. Yeah. So there's, there's a lot to learn there. I mean, I don't know how all the process is, whether you go to a coin shop, whether you you sell it now there are you know you can also have your your stuff stored like a gold money where the selling is easy you just hit the button and you say sell these this amount of silver this amount of gold all right let's see i've had some bad luck lately with men all right we haven't done dating advice on this channel don't think we'll start there okay I miss Y2K, the good old days for us bank programmers. Ah, so there's Crypto Shrugged Author showing his background in programming. Buy rounds, don't spend the premium at these prices. Well, that makes sense, De Laville, because as I mentioned, you know, I have a clever, a, a nifty little chart that if you want, I'll, I'll either post it or I'll email it to you that shows the premium percentage. I did a little chart where I showed at $2 what the percentage premium is when silver is 14, 18, 20. It's a sliding scale. It kind of shows you, then you can figure out how much the price of silver has to go up to figure out how much, you, if you're ever going to make your money back because the dealers don't pay. You pay the two and a quarter, 279, whatever it is, over spot for your silver eagle. You're lucky if you get a buck over spot when you go to return them. So you've already lost that premium. Whereas I guess on the rounds, you don't lose as much because if you can get them close to spot, they don't pay spot for rounds, but they don't pay $2 under. All right, let's see. I wonder what would have happened if they hadn't done, yeah, Y2K. I don't know. That would have been very interesting. And Ann says nothing. Nothing happened because they prepared for it. Pablo is saying, Ann, that if what if they didn't do anything? They just try to let the computers run over. Yeah, billing issues. Yep, that might have happened. De La Ville, get mugs, and my hubby and I have his and hers. Yes, if you don't have a, a small gold mug. By the way, I mean, some of you also are new, and you hear these mug references and mug game changers. Here's what we're talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Those are the small gold game changer mugs, at least four of them. The small gold super classic on the left, the small gold classic on the right. They can be ordered directly from Small Gold Headquarters. You go to smallgold.com. You can pay with PayPal. If you don't want to use PayPal, I'm fine with that. Again, you can send Litecoin or Bitcoin. I'll put it in the Coinbase. Um, and they're $23.99 and $19.99 respectively. It sounds expensive, but it's not. I paid, I think, $16 for one and $14 for the other. And with shipping, it ends up being basically that price. 
and I send them priority mail because I don't want any nonsense and returns and breakages. If there is, there's $50 insurance on them and you get a tracking number. And I send those out with a personal note and tonight I'll send them out with a game changer eraser. A game changer erasers are the best because most people don't use erasers anymore. They use control, alt, delete. So you can show your kids, your grandkids, whatever you got, a small gold game changer eraser. Also the travel mug to the right and the, well it was to the right, the travel mug was to the right and the espresso mug was to the bottom. They could be ordered at the Zazzle site. Also all these links are on the small gold site. There's your small gold beer stein. That is actually my favorite now, even though the original mugs still have hold nostalgia for me. I think this is the most attractive looking mug uh, next to the, well, the super classic still maybe. I don't know. We should probably do a poll. And then there is the frosted mug, which doesn't look good on this picture, but is really sweet looking. You put it in your freezer. It gets even frostier. You pour your beverage in there. It's nice. And if you're looking for stocking stuffers, you got them at the small gold site as well. You got your magnetic opener. You slap this on your fridge and you've also got a bottle opener. And there's also pens, t-shirts, hats, and so on. Helps the site out and you would be a real game changer. I do get emails all the time, people telling me, people, when they're standing around the water cooler or the, or the coffee urn, they always comment on the small gold mug and they have to tell them that it's a game changer. All right. Let's see. Yeah, and you can on the small gold site, and on the small gold site, but at the small gold store, you can order them in different sizes. I like the 10 ounces because if you have no lid on, anything over that gets cold in a coffee mug, they do come. You can make, you can have them made bigger if you like. All right. I would love to see Silver do that, a relief and belief rally. Yeah, a relief rally. You know, the problem is, Sometimes it's only a relief rally, and that's your chance to sell. Uh, but if it turns into a belief rally, then you kick yourself. So I guess you sell half. Carl Joseph DeMarco. I'm listening to Small Gold and Bad Scent at the time. Carl Joseph also has a small gold mug. Let's see. What else do we got here? Oh, he's got an article. I'm going to show this. Carl Joseph DeMarco says that there's an article about how Wall Street Journal and how U.S. expats are leaving China. And he's one of them. <laughs> Guess they don't care that much about the Petro Gold Yuan. Actually, the gold back Yuan was the original game changer. There was that phony article when all the people were quoted as, this is a game changer, there's a gold back Yuan. Mike Baloney had done a video. This is going to be a game changer. He actually, in one of his videos, he called me out for telling for, for commenting that there is no gold back you on coming and that there's no source for the story. And he did this whole video. He points out my comment, circles it, and he says, and then there's some people down in the comments who say this isn't a real story and there's not sources. Well, I'll give you sources. And then he names a bunch of stories that don't have any sources to them. And of course, there never was a gold back you on game changer. And we never heard anything about it since. Then it turned into the Petro Yawn and it turned into, well, it's a dollar denied. They just, I don't know. What I said about that from day one was that it was going to be a Yuan denominated oil futures contract. That's it. That's all China ever said. Nope. China just announced. They never, China didn't announce jack about a gold back yuan. Oh, they'll just bring over their their yuan to the Shanghai Gold Exchange and they'll get gold for it. <laughs> of course they will. Never. Never was going to happen. Didn't happen. All right. You, Lewis. Just kidding. Uh, I don't know what he's talking about. It must have been funny, but I don't, I must have said something 10 minutes ago. All right. Ah, real dating advice. Did Lewis ever tell you how he met his wife? I did not. That may be a story for one day. How I proposed is another interesting story. Okay. I sent 420 ounces to Georgia to Michigan, registered and insured. Oh, the most important thing is how you package it. You see, now that's an argument against owning physical silver. You got to load it up. You got to drag it to the post office. And then you got to hope that it gets there. And then you got to hope that people you sent it to are going to pay you. Yeah. 
Travel mug looks good. Yeah, a lot of people like the travel mug. I actually in it's I have one. It the the logo doesn't really show up as nicely. It's cool. I mean, I wouldn't argue against it, but the, the others are more stunning looking. But you have to if you have to have a travel mug, it's it's definitely I got mine right here and it doesn't have this morning's coffee in it. Um it's definitely a good deal, but it's not my favorite, just being honest. I like the the other ones better, but if you need a travel mug, it's as good as any. All right, I am extremely lucky she is drinking her decaf from a small gold mug here in Mexico. Now, I got a nice picture also from Crypto Shrugged author of the mug. I think at the time, though, it might have been filled with an adult beverage. Uh, let's see. I prefer my scotch from a glass. Yes, but in a pinch, if you don't have a glass. Yeah, there's all the instructions de la Ville. Well, if you want to come on the show and talk about that or if anybody wants to come on, all this, it's the small gold subscribers sound off. If you go to, I'll make it easy for you. Um, if you go to the small gold YouTube channel and you look on playlists, I think one of them is small gold subscribers sound off. And you can see the format. I'm much nicer to the guests than I am to the silver and gold pumpers. But, um, and uh, those who've been on the show can attest was a game changing game changing moment in their lives for some for some it was the first time they'd ever had an interview so i think it's really cool um you do reach a few hundred sometimes some of them gotten thousands of visits yeah so you go to playlist i'm going to pull it up for you now and there's small gold subscriber sound off there it is i'll give you the link you can listen to the format used it. and uh i'm nicer to you when you talk to me personally and there you go. Get the tape at Amazon. All right. I like drinking out of glass mugs, but I use travel mugs daily. Yeah, well, you can get one of each. Get get one, and I'll send you the Game Changer Eraser with your Classic or Super Classic. And then from the Small Gold Store, you can get the travel mug. Yeah, that's why I have the travel. Not because I like I, I do travel with it. It's very nice. You take it outside. You take it in the car. It's good. All right, well, that about does it for this evening. I want to thank everyone for joining me. I may put up a poll because I'm not sure whether we should cover the update on all the Comey nonsense, Mueller nonsense, if you want to hear about that, or if you want to do Saturday Night Silver with Small Gold tomorrow night. I'll probably do a poll, and we'll let it fly from there. It's good that I'm prepared to discuss pretty much anything, and I'm glad that you guys are pretty much prepared to listen to it. So thank you very much, and we will see you tomorrow night.